Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this final video on derivatives and shapes of curves, we're going to discuss intervals on which a function is concave up or concave down using the second derivative. We're going to find inflection points on the graph of a function, use the second derivative test to classify critical points as a local maximum or minimum, and then finally, we're going to use the first and second derivatives to analyze the graph of a function. So let's start with our discussion on concavity and what does this tell us. So in the previous video, we've already seen how the first derivative informs us about how does a function increase and decrease. Where are there a local maximum and local minimum using the first derivative test? So now the second derivative is going to give us information on whether the graph, how the graph bends and turns. So we can use the first derivative and the second derivative combined with our understanding of symmetry and asymptotic behavior to draw an accurate graph of a function. So the definition of concave up and concave down, a function or a graph is called concave up on an interval i if f prime of x is increasing on that interval. And concave down means that the derivative is decreasing on the same interval. So what does this mean that f prime of x is increasing and f prime of x is decreasing? Well, the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line. So if the slopes of the tangent lines increase from left to right, then f prime is increasing. And that means that the original function is concave up. On the other hand, if the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing from left to right, then the derivative is a decreasing function and the original function is concave down. So let's look at the graph. From x equals a to x equals b, it looks like the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing from left to right. So f prime of x is an increasing function from x equals a to b. That means that the graph, the uh, graph of f of x is concave up. And it definitely looks like the graph is bending up as you go from left to right. On the other hand, between x equals b and x equals c, it looks like the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing in value. So that means the original function is concave down instead. And finally, if x is greater than c, it looks like the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing again. So f prime of x is increasing, and that means the original function, f of x, is again concave up. And it does look like the graph is bending up again, whereas between x equals b and c, it looks like the graph was bending down from left to right. So now one other thing we can point out with the graph are these points p and q. A point where the curve changes its direction on concavity is called an inflection point. So point P is at x equals b. x equals b is where the graph changed from concave up to concave down. So this is called an inflection point at P. Same thing for Q. It's where the graph changes from concave down to concave up and that was at x equals c. Okay, so now that we know what it means for a graph to be concave up and down and inflection points, we can use the idea that we discussed in the previous video involving the first derivative to identify where does a function increase and decrease using the derivative. So this gives us what's called the concavity test. If the second derivative is positive, that means f prime is increasing. And if f prime is increasing, 
That means the original function is concave up on that interval. And if the second derivative is negative, then that means f prime is decreasing. And if f prime is decreasing, the original function is concave down on that same interval. So knowing the sign of the second derivative informs us whether the function f of x is concave up or concave down. So let's try example five. Find the critical points. Let's try example six. Determine the intervals on which f of x equals x to the fourth, subtract 4x cubed plus 10, is increasing and decreasing. And find out where the graph is concave up and concave down. Find out any local maximum and local minimum values and points of inflection or inflection points. Once we have all this information obtained from the first and second derivatives, we can provide a sketch of the graph. Now I know the, sketch, the graph is given, but our sketch using the first and second derivatives should be very similar to this graph. So let's start with the first derivative. And we know with the first derivative, we can find the critical numbers of f of x. So find the first derivative of the function would be 4x cubed subtract 12x squared. Notice that this function is defined for all x values. So f prime of x is undefined. That never occurs. So there are no critical values or critical numbers for f prime of x being undefined. But f prime of x could equal 0, and that can also give us critical numbers. 4x cubed subtract 12x squared equals 0. That tells me that 4x squared times x minus 3 equals 0. And that tells me that x equals 0 or x equals 3. So these are called critical numbers. And so those are the only two critical numbers that we have for f of x. So now we're ready to construct a sign chart for f prime. So this is a sign chart for the first derivative. All right. And we know that the critical numbers are plotted on the sign chart, so 0 and 3. We choose test values on each of these sub-intervals. I'm going to choose x equals negative 1, 1, and x equals 4 as my test values. And these test values go into the first derivative to determine its sign. So f prime of negative 1, f prime of 1, f prime of 4. So we're going to determine that if you substitute a negative 1 into the derivative, the sign will be negative on that interval. That means the original function is decreasing from left to right. f prime of 1 is also negative. So that's still, that means the function is still decreasing from left to right. And f prime of 4, that is a positive number. And that means the function will be increasing from left to right. So we can write the intervals on where f of x is increasing and decreasing f of x is increasing on 3 to infinity. And f of x is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 3. It's decreasing until you get to x equals 3. All right, and then the last thing we can talk about in terms of the first derivative is the first derivative derivative test. So looking at the sign chart, notice that x equals 0. It's the function's decreasing on the left side and decreasing on the right side. So x equals 0 is not a local max nor local min. 
On the other hand, x equals 3, decreasing on the left side, increasing on the right side. So f of 3, which is equal to negative 17, is a local minimum. of f of x, and there is no local maximum. So this is all the information we can gain from the first derivative. Increasing and decreasing intervals, and local maximum and local minimum values, and critical numbers. So now we're ready to use the second derivative to obtain information about concavity and inflection points. So the first derivative was 4x cubed subtract 12x squared. Take the second derivative, 12x squared subtract 24x. Now notice again that f double prime is never undefined. But f double prime could equal zero. And this tells us that 12x squared subtract 24x equals zero. Or x equals two and x equals zero. Now, these are not called critical numbers. Critical numbers is exclusively for the first derivative only. In recent years, the last 10, 15 years, there's a college professor in Illinois, who, Professor Her Hergert, who has named him after himself. So any numbers where the second derivative is zero, or the second derivative is undefined, these are called Hergert numbers. And this, this name has been catching on in recent years, especially at community colleges, since the professor teaches at a community college in Illinois. So once you have the, Ker the Hergert numbers, then let's make a sign chart for the second derivative. Knowing the sign of the second derivative tells us whether the function f of x is incre or concave up or concave down. So again, label the sign chart. We'll call it f double prime. And this is a sign chart for f double prime of x. So the Hergert numbers are on the sign chart, 0 and 2. And I'm going to choose test values of negative 1, 1, and 3. So these are substituted into the second derivative this time to determine concavity. So at x equals negative 1, we're going to determine that the, we're going to find out that the graph is concave up. So the second derivative is positive. So there's the notation for concave up. Concave down at x equals 1. So concave down, and then positive again at x equals 3, so the graph is concave up once again. So f of x is concave up on the intervals negative infinity to 0 and 2 to infinity. And f of x is concave down. from 0 to 2. So once we have um, the intervals of concavity, now we can go back and use the sign chart to determine any points of inflection. So points of inflection are where the concavity changes, and they can only occur at Hergert numbers. So at x equals 0, the graph was concave up on the left, and when x's are greater than 0, it's concave down. So there is a point of inflection when x equals 0. So let's find out the y-coordinate. If you substitute in 0 into the original function to find the y-coordinate, it's going to be 10. So 0, 10 is a point of inflection 
And same for x equals 2. Concave down when x's are less than 2. Concave up when x is greater than 2. So f of 2 will be negative 6. And that gives us a point of inflection at 2 comma negative 6. Now, once we have all the information obtained from the second derivative in terms of concavity and points of inflection, the last thing we can do is sketch a graph using all the information we obtained from the first and second derivatives. So let's make a quick sketch. Keep in mind that our sketch should be very similar to uh, the graph that was on the previous page. So let's count the x values by 1. Um, I need to graph uh, the, lo the local minimum, which is at 3, negative 17. So let's count by 5s. Negative 5, negative 10, 15, 20. 5, 10, 15, 20. So let's plot the points first that we found from the function that were important. There was a local minimum at 3, negative 17. So that'd be about right there. Make sure you label your points that you've plotted. That's a local min. There were also points of inflection at 0, 0,10. Point of inflection, POI, and 2 comma negative 6 will be about right there. And that's also a point of inflection. All right, so now let's use the information that we, can't, we gained from the two sign charts. When x was less than 0, the graph is concave up, so the graph is bending up. And we found out from the first derivative, the sign chart, that the function is decreasing until you get to x equals 3. So concave up and decreasing will look like that. So concave up and the function's decreasing. But then when x is greater than 0 and up to 2, the graph is concave down. So the graph will bend down from x equals 0 to x equals 2. But the graph is also still decreasing. So it will look like this. So this is decreasing and concave down. And then finally, the graph is concave up from 2 to infinity. And it starts to bend up x equals 3 is where the graph changed from decreasing to increasing, and it's still concave up. So the graph will go up forever. So this is the sketch of a graph. This is increasing and concave up here. So this is a good representation of the graph of f of x. And, oh, f of x was x to the fourth. Subtract 4x cubed plus 10. Okay, so now let's try a different problem. In example 7, we're going to determine just the open intervals on which this function is concave up and concave down and determine any inflection points if they exist. So we're not asked about intervals of increasing or decreasing or local max or local mins, nor sketching the graph. We're only interested in information we can obtain from the second derivative only. All right, so the function is a rational function. So let's start by taking the first derivative using the quotient rule. So low times derivative of the top, 2x. Subtract the numerator times derivative of the denominator is 2x. Also, 
divided by denominator squared. All right, so the more that we simplify, the less work we'll need to do for the second derivative. So distribute, and also distribute that negative. So we'll have 2x to the third, subtract 8x, then subtract 2x cubed, and subtract 2x, divided by x squared minus 4, all to the second which means the first derivative is negative 10x divided by x squared subtract 4 squared. So we would stop here if we were if we were interested in finding the critical numbers, local max, local mins, if any, and increasing and decreasing intervals. But we're only interested in concavity and inflection points, so we need to find the second derivative. And to find the second derivative, we need to use the quotient rule and the chain rule. So low times the deriv derivative of the numerator, negative 10, subtract the numerator, times the derivative of the denominator, chain rule, 2 times x squared minus 4 to the first power times the derivative of the inside function, 2x, divided by denominator squared. So that will make it x squared subtract 4 to the fourth. So do some simplifying, make sure you square first before you distribute, and we'll do some cleanup with that second term. So if you multiply x squared minus 4 squared, you'll get x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 16 times negative 10. And then this second term is really plus 10x times 2 times 2x. That will give you plus 40x squared times x squared minus 4. And then this is divided by the same denominator. Distribute the negative 10. Distribute the 40x squared. Combine like terms. And you'll come up with 30x to the fourth plus 80x squared. I believe it's 80. Just to save some time, it is subtract 80. Yep, negative 80x squared. And then subtract 160. Divided by x squared, subtract 4, all to the second, or fourth, fourth. So notice that there's a 10 in common in the numerator. 3x to the fourth, subtract 8x squared, subtract 16, divided by x squared minus 4 to the fourth. And it just happens that the trinomial also factors. 3x squared plus 4 times x squared minus 4 divided by denominator and all this work was not for nothing or it was it was not for nothing it's because the x squared minus 4 has a common factor in the numerator and denominator so the simplified second derivative is 10 times 3x squared plus 4 divided by x squared subtract 4 cubed All right, so that's the simplified second derivative. Let's find the Hergert numbers. Where is the second derivative undefined? So the second derivative is undefined if the denominator is zero. So x squared subtract four cubed equals zero, which of course take the cube root on both sides, x squared minus four equals zero, and that's going to give us x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0, or x equals negative 2 and positive 2. So these two are Hergert numbers. And then we also have the possibility of the second derivative equals 0, which if the second derivative is 0, then the numerator is 0. Uh, 10 times 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. 
Dividing by 10 will not change what the solutions will be. So 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. And notice that this will have no real solutions to this equation, this quadratic equation. Solutions. So there are no Hergert numbers from this equation. Just x equals 2 and negative 2 are the only ones. So now we're ready to create a sign chart for the second derivative. So we have negative 2 and 2. Let's choose negative 3, 0, and positive 3 as our test values. And these go into the second derivative to determine the sign. We're going to find out that at negative 3, you will have a positive sign, positive number. So that means the original function is concave up when x is less than negative 2. At x equals 0, the second derivative is negative, so the graph of f of x is concave down. And then it's back to positive at x equals 3. It would be a good, good thing to go back and make sure that these are the correct signs and that you have practice getting the correct signs for your sign chart. But we've noticed that f of x is concave up on the interval negative infinity to negative 2, and also 2 to infinity. And f of x is concave down. from negative 2 to 2. So then the other thing we need to find for this problem are the inflection points. I usually call them points of inflection, but they're the same. So points of inflection would occur when the concavity changes, and they can only occur at Hergert numbers. So concavity change from up to down at negative 2, so f of negative 2, you will find that uh, f of negative 2, I didn't actually calculate this, this would give you 5 in the numerator and 0 in the denominator. So this is undefined. There are There is no point at x equals negative 2. And I think the same will happen for f of 2 f of 2 will give you positive 5 divided by 0 again, so x cannot be positive 2. Let's go back and see what, why that's occurring. The function, the denominator was x squared subtract 4. Well, the domain turns out it's all real numbers for this function except for negative 2 and 2. So this gives us some insight on what's happening with the graph. There are no inflection points because to be an inflection point, it needs to be a point on the graph. There are vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and 2. So no point of inflection exists. So this gives us our intervals of concavity and no inflection points. Alright, so now we're going to use this information in concerning the second derivative for an application involving velocity and acceleration. A particle is moving along a horizontal coordinate line, so a, like similar as the x-axis, or t-axis in this case. It's moving in the positive direction to the right with the position function s of t, 2t cubed minus 14t squared plus 22t subtract 5. Find the velocity and acceleration functions. Find the points of inflection, if any exist. So we have the position function. We need to calculate the derivative. That would be velocity. 
6t cubed or squared subtract 28t plus 22. So we would stop if you were looking for local max, local min, uh, intervals of increasing and decreasing, but we are looking for points of inflection. So we need to find the second derivative, which is the derivative of velocity, and we know that's called acceleration. So acceleration is 12t subtract 28. And we can find any potential points of inflection where there's a Hergert number. So a of t is uh, 12t subtract 28. So a of t is always defined, so undefined never occurs. But there will be a value where the, the acceleration is zero. 12t subtract 28 equals zero, and that gives us t equals 7 thirds, or approximately, this is in terms of application and time, so it, it makes sense to approximate 2.33, and this was in, uh, doesn't say what the units are, so let's just say units. So we know that might be a uh, point of inflection. It depends on the concavity. So, so far, this is just called a Hergert number. We need to construct a sign chart to determine the sign. So this will be for acceleration, which is the second derivative of position function. Now, the Hergert number was 7 thirds, but keep in mind, this is talking, the T is, in, is um, referring to time. Time cannot be negative. So, keep that in mind when you choose your test values. We we'll use T equals 1 and T equals, how about 3? So, at T equals 1, this needs to be substituted into the acceleration function. So t of 1 is pa or, uh, it's negative. So concave down because the second derivative is negative. And acceleration at 3 seconds is positive. So position function is concave up. Now we're not interested in con the concavity necessarily, we're finding out where does the concavity change. It cha The concavity changes from concave down to concave up at t equals 7 thirds. So that is a point of inflection. Seven thirds. And if you substitute seven thirds into the, func the position function, you'll find it's negative 121 divided by 27. So we found the one point of inflection. All right. So then the last thing to look at in this section is what's called the second derivative test for local extrema. So we can make a sign chart and use the first derivative test to identify local max and local minimum values based on whether the graph is decreasing and increasing. It turns out you can also use the second derivative test to identify local max and local minimum values in a, in a function's graph. So this is called the second derivative test. The second derivative must be continuous at x equals c. Now, this x equals c is a critical or critical number for f of x. So that means f prime of c is zero or undefined, as we discussed in the previous video. That's what it means to be a critical number. So then. Case number one, if 
the derivative at c is zero. That means you have a horizontal tangent line at x equals c. And the second derivative at the critical number is positive. That tells us that at x equals c, the graph is concave up. So that would be referring to this, this graph. The graph is concave up and you have a horizontal tangent line. That means it must be a local minimum for the function at x equals c. It's concave up and you have a horizontal tangent line, it must be a local minimum. So we're looking at, is there a horizontal tangent line and what's the sign of the second derivative at the critical number? On the other hand, if you have a horizontal tangent line at C and the second derivative is negative, then that tells you the graph is concave down. And if it's concave down and you have a horizontal tangent line, that must be a local maximum at the critical number. Or, yeah, critical number. So let's finish up with an example involving the second derivative test. So example nine, use the second derivative test to classify all local extrema for the function f of x equals negative three x to the fifth plus five x cubed. So the second derivative test does not use the first derivative test and the sign chart. The second derivative test says, find all the critical numbers first. So find the first derivative. Determine where it's undefined or equal to zero. The first derivative is negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared. Notice that f prime is always defined, so undefined never occurs again. But the first derivative could be 0 when negative 15x to the fourth plus 15x squared equals 0. Factor out negative 15x squared, you'll have x squared minus 1 remaining. And that will factor as a difference of squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. So it looks like we have three critical numbers, x equals 0, x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1. So these are called critical numbers because this was for the first derivative. So uh, from the second derivative test, we have three different critical numbers that we can test. And, class, and potentially classify as a local max or local min. So now we are not creating a sign chart. The sign chart would be the first derivative test. We need to use the second derivative test. So calculate the second derivative, which is negative 60x cubed plus 30x. Don't set this equal to zero. That would find the Hergert numbers. That would potentially tell you if you have any point of inflection. We're not interested in those. We need to find local extrema, so local max and local min. Substitute these values into the second derivative. So let's try, ne let's try negative 1 first. If you substitute a negative 1 into the second derivative, it will turn out to be negative 30. So this means at negative 1, the second derivative is negative. So the graph is concave down. But from our earlier work, at x equals negative 1, you have a horizontal tangent line at x equals negative 1. That means there's a local maximum when x is negative 1. So now I'll substitute this back into the original function to find out what is the uh, y value. Negative 3 times negative 1 to the fifth plus 5 times negative 1 to the third. This will turn out to be uh, negative 2. So there's a local maximum, negative 2. Now let's test x equals 1. 
if you substitute in 1 into the function, I think I have these backwards, don't I? Yeah, these are backwards. So we have a local minimum at x equals negative 1 because the graph is concave up. So this is a local min instead of max. when x equals negative 1. Now, if f double prime is 1, you find out it's negative 30 for the second derivative. Now, this one is concave down, and you had a horizontal tangent line at x equals 1. So, this says there's a local maximum when x is equal to 1. And if you substitute 1 into the function, you will find the y value is 2. So the local maximum is 2, and there's a local minimum at negative 2. Now the one we haven't tested yet is x equals 0, and that's because it is a special case. So if you substitute 0 into the second derivative, you will find out that the second derivative is also 0. So the second derivative test is inconclusive for x equals 0. That means the second derivative test does not tell you whether x equals 0 is a local max or local min. You would have to use the first derivative test instead. And that's where we would, we would need to use a sign chart for the first derivative to find out does the graph change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing at x equals 0. That's the only way to classify x equals 0 as a local max or min. So otherwise, if the sign of the der second derivative is positive at the critical number, it's concave up. That means there's a local minimum. And if the second derivative is negative at the critical number, then it's concave down, and that means you have a local max. All right, and then at the end of the section, there's this nice table to summarize everything that we've learned in the previous two videos and then this current video. A function that is differentiable means that the function is smooth and continuous, connected, and the graph may rise or fall. So differentiable implied continuity or continuous. So the function is continuous and smooth. If it's differentiable, the derivative does exist. So no cusp, no corners, no vertical tangent lines. If the derivative is positive, that means the function is increasing or rises from the left to right. If the derivative is negative, the function will be decreasing from left to right or falls. If the second derivative is positive, that means the graph can be concave up and increasing or concave down and decrease and concave up and decreasing. If the second derivative is negative, the graph is concave down and it could be increasing or concave down and decreasing. Any time that the second derivative changes signs, it's an inflection point. And then this is an illustration of whether you have a local max or a local minimum. If the derivative changes signs, from positive to negative, so increasing to decreasing, you have a local max. If it changes, if the derivative changes from negative to positive, the function's decreasing to increasing, so that's a local minimum. And these last two are the second derivative test. If the first derivative is zero, and the second derivative is negative at a point, then you are concave down, and you, you have a horizontal tangent line. So that, mean, that means it must be a local max. And the last case, if the derivative is 0 and the second derivative is positive at a point, then the graph is concave up and you have a horizontal tangent line. So it must be a local minimum. So this finishes up our discussion on derivatives and the shapes of graphs using the first and second derivatives.
If you have any questions about concavity or inflection points or the second derivative, if you have any questions about the second derivative test, please let me know. If you have any questions while you work on the homework, please let, let me know that as well. And I will look for you at the next video when we talk about the Hoppe-Tals rule.